the 2nd of December 2021, for some reason, probably because I was at home and kind of bored, I decided to try my hand at game dev. Hey, I'm Benja, and today I'll show you what I achieved in a month of learning game development with no previous experience. If you're a lost beginner like me, an expert that wish to help, or laugh a bit, or just curious about my journey, consider subscribing to my channel where I'll try to keep you up to date with my creations and share tips I found along the way. Feel free to skip to the section you're interested in. I don't work in a computer field related job. In my everyday life I work as a photographer and teacher for kids. I teach all kind of stuff, but mostly how to endure dad jokes. I've seen a bit of C++ code during my studies, but didn't really get it. And neither did I like it. The closest I've been from game dev is modifying the HTML code of my photography website and learning how to create a few 3D assets during the COVID lockdown. To sum it up, as a curious person I knew about Unreal and Unity and what a FBX file is. I knew the basics of moving in a 3D program. That's about it. Despite already knowing a little bit about Unreal as I used it to display my 3D creations and despite the hype behind Unreal 5, I still decided to learn Unity. If you wish to know why, I suggest you check out my video about this topic. Link is in the description. I mostly learned by following tutorials on YouTube, on the Unity Learn website and a course I found on Udemy. I don't think the courses I've followed are that important. What I think was important is that I lost countless hours trying to modify these projects to add my own ideas, getting me in many troubles I had to solve. As an example, in the Brachys project, which was my first one, I found the look of the ball levitating really cool, so I tried to get my ball to have gravity but still levitate a few inches from the ground. Yeah, I see you laughing, that's an easy thing to do. But keep in mind that I was only in my third hour of learning game dev or so. I never hesitated to create my own game, implementing the things I just learned. Most of them are badly designed and unplayable, but I learned a lot doing so. This one is supposed to be a shooter on three different heights. It taught me to generate random objects at random positions and set their speed in relation to their sizes. The player can move freely on the horizontal axis but by defined increments on the vertical axis. In this other one you must protect the pole from red cubes. You can destroy a red cube by touching it. But you can only do so every 3 seconds. The ground is slippery making it hard to control properly the ball. If you can't delete a cube, you will move it by a certain amount if he's small enough. Creating problems that motivates you is an incredible way to learn in my opinion. You'll be more proud to finish your project if it has your own twist. And yes, I was proud of my games, even if they were complete copycat and barely playable. I even uploaded some on itch.io for my father to try. At that point, I felt ready to tackle a bigger project. I created a platform game with a pretty cool color concept. But before I explain it, here are all the things I implemented. A menu with music and animations. An animated third-person character that can jump, trigger stuff and collect coins. Multiple cameras, sound effects and animations triggered by the actions or position of the player. Lives. When the player loses a life, he becomes invincible for a short period of time. Checkpoints. They're invisible, but if you die after passing a checkpoint, you will respawn here. A UI that displays lives, coins and a minimap. Dangerous animated traps. An enemy with a simple AI, he's patrolling until you come close enough for him to chase you. The ability to change the color of the character. Now, here's the concept. There are three colors in this game, red, blue and yellow. They interact in an order. Each color can interact with the next one, red interacts with blue, blue with yellow and yellow with red. If the player is red, he can interact with blue objects. If the player is the same color as the object, nothing happens. The player will ignore it go through the object. Finally, for the last option. If the player is red and touches a yellow object, it will turn the object to red. Now that the object is red, the player will go through it. The same goes for every color. This allowed me to create some tricky puzzle games that require a bit of reflection and reactivity.
This game was made for learning purposes. It is not finished and far from perfect, but at this point I achieved my goals and wanted to move on. This brings me to my fourth week of learning game dev. This time I decided to try to create an FPS from scratch. Again, using only free assets. I will talk more about it in a dedicated devlog but here's a preview of its current state. If you're curious about my next steps in this journey, please subscribe to my channel. If you have any comment or questions, I'm all here for it. I've got a lot to learn so don't hesitate to give me some advices too. Until next time, take care.